Hello ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to take a look at finding the equation of a parabola whose focus is at, I'm going to focus at 7, 11, the camera's not focused, and a directrix at y equals negative 1. Uh, before we get started into this, you can see I've put together a little bit of a graph here. We've got an x-axis, a y-axis, our point right here at 7, 11, and also that line y equals negative 1. And the reason why I'm doing this is just so that I can get a visual of where this parabola is going to be. Uh, we can kind of predict our vertex to be somewhere in here. I think it's 12 units from here to here, so about 6 units, maybe um, 7, 5 should be where the vertex is. And we can picture the parabola going up like this. So if I were to pick some point right about here, point P, and we'll call it X, Y. Again, this is the visualization that we have to go through to set up an equation to solve uh, for, you know, at least to find our parabola. So looking at the point here, you can see the coordinate itself is at x, y. So if I take and measure all the way down to here, clearly that's the y distance. It can be any distance, but we want to call it y, and then we've got to add that extra unit down at the bottom. So I'm going to set up part of my equation as y plus 1 equals, now keep in mind that the focus and the directrix, they are every single point on the parabola is equidistant from um, the focus and the directrix. Yeah, my picture looks a little not uh, drawn to scale, clearly. But the next step is to worry about the slope triangle that we put in here. Uh, again, this hypotenuse should be the same distance as the line that I've drawn down to the directrix. So, in coming up with that equation, we again just have to ask ourselves, what do we have to do to the x's and the y, to the x point and the y point to get it back at zero? So, when I'm starting out at x equals 7, I want to do x minus 7 squared. That's going to be this distance here, the bottom of that slope triangle. y is at 11, so we want to do y minus 11. And that's going to be the distance up here on the side of my slope triangle, y minus 11. So, and again, I apologize, the focus on this thing isn't working out so well. But y minus 11, x minus 7, so those are the two sides of the triangle. And using Pythagorean's theorem, you do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, take the square root, and that's what our equation looks like to start. The next step we want to do in this process is to get rid of that square root. Remember, we can only do good algebra steps, so if we do it on one side, we have to do it on the other side. y plus 1 quantity squared, y squared plus 2y plus 1. Make sure we multiply that out appropriately. Square, and the square root cancel out nicely for us, just leaving us with the x minus 7 quantity squared plus y minus 11 quantity squared. And we're going to go through and multiply these out also. Okay, y squared plus 2y plus 1 equaling, you've got x squared. When you multiply this side, you've got x minus 7 times x minus 7. So you've got 2 of the negative 7x is giving me negative 14x. Negative 7 squared is a positive 49. And we'll get rid of that 1 that I accidentally wrote in there. And we've got, well, y squared, 11y, and another 11y is a 22, so we've got minus 22y plus 121. So that's what the next line of our equation should read. y squared plus 2y plus 1 equals x squared minus 14x plus 49 plus y squared minus 22y plus 121. Now comes the fun part of combining like terms. One thing you'll notice is that my y squared and y squared cancel out nicely. So I'm left with the 2y1 equaling x squared 14x 49 minus 22y and 121. Now because I can notice, again thinking back at the picture there, visually it's going to be an opening up parabola. So I probably want to get everything in terms of y as in y equals something x squared. So I'm going to take that 22y and I'm going to bring him over right away. I'm going to subtract off the 1 just for good measure. Minus 22, or plus 22 from this side over here. Minus 1, minus 1. So now we've got 24y 
22 plus 2 equaling, and we've got our x squared, we've got our minus 14x, and we've got 49 plus 121 minus 1. Well, 49 plus 121 is 170, minus the 1 is plus 169. Now, you're saying to yourself, that looks kind of a like a messy little equation that we've got going on here. And if I take off the 24 off of the y side, I've got that equation y equals x squared minus 14x plus 169, everything divided by 24. Now, the next wisest thing to do is just to go ahead and take that equation right into our calculator. I apologize, I'll try to get some of the glare off of here. Yeah, y equals up. I'm going to do parentheses 1 divided by 24, so I've got that A value out front. And x squared minus 14x. Plus 169. Uh, make sure we put parentheses all over the place so that way our calculator knows where parentheses start and where the parentheses stop. We hit graph. And then we get a problem that works out just like that. And I believe from the original picture we thought that uh, somewhere between 11 and negative 1, which would be at 6, or 6 units down, so at uh, x equals 7, we should be at 5 on our graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my table, take a look at it. If you back out and zoom in, the picture's not going to work out so well. But right there is where I'm at 7. And it turns out the value I'm at, I'm at is at 5. The other way we can check this is by going back to the graph and hitting that second calculate function. So second right here, calculate. You can see we've got value as option number one. I'm going to hit enter on that and then I'm going to enter in seven. And you can see that x equals seven and y equals five. Again, I know it's kind of fuzzy. So I hope this helps you clear up some information. It does require a bit of algebra. It's not terribly bad, but just trust the algebra skills and you'll get there eventually.